Wido. The company I work for has about 30 employees. It's a small web design company. I'm Mao Nanase. I'm 25 and just joined the programming department. Our company's business performance has been really good, so everybody is always in a good mood. <laughs> we always get off work on time and often go out for drinks. Mao, let's go grab some drinks. Um, I have plans today. They invite me almost every day, but I decline their offers these days. One reason is that I don't handle alcohol very well. And the other reason is... His name is Soda Nagato. He's also 25. He's in charge of the outsource staff and works alone most of the time. He never joins the after-work get-togethers. He always stays at the office alone and continues working. All of the employees, including the CEO, are not very fond of him. He's an introvert and doesn't like talking to people. He's extremely busy. He gets phone calls from our clients all day to ask for his support. Everybody talks bad about his lack of ability to do his job right. You're still here? Look around and learn! I'm not paying you for overtime! You're just bad at getting your work done! The CEO is in his 40s, and he has a military-like character. He gets us a lot of jobs to get done, but he doesn't know a thing about designs or technology. So he doesn't understand the content of Soda's work, and his advice tends to be all about grit and guts. He doesn't talk to anybody even if he comes out with us. He's better off working here all alone. Well, I guess that's true. Okay, let's go then. The other employees just sit there and laugh at him. I've never seen any of them concerned for him or lending a hand to help him. Why don't we help him just a little? We're supposed to be working together. That loser likes working by himself. Mao, don't spoil him just because you guys came here around the same time. I tried talking to them once, but they laughed it off, and my voice didn't seem to reach them at all. Is there anything I can do? No, it's really okay. <laughs> Don't be so stubborn. Let me help you out. Thanks. Then can you do this part? I'm new here, so there's only so much I can do, but I tried to help out as much as possible. Another day at the office. The other employees did have a point. Soda indeed got a lot of phone calls from his clients. And today was no different. Look, Soda's getting another call. Why does he get so many calls all the time? It's because he doesn't do his job right. His clients are probably calling him to fix something or to complain about his work. We try to teach him as much as we can, but you know how he is. Gosh, what an impudent brat! Soda answered each call politely, no matter how many calls he had to take. One day, the CEO came rushing in and started yelling. Apparently, there was an important item that wasn't delivered on time. Who the hell is responsible for this? Soda, sir. One employee pointed Soda out. Huh? Um, well... Remember? I asked you to take care of it? You again! I can't take this anymore! You're so slow at your job! And you make so many mistakes! We don't need you anymore! Don't you dare come into the office tomorrow! You're fired! Uh, uh, hold on a second! I couldn't believe he was firing Soda without hearing both sides of the story. I opened my mouth to protest, but then... I understand. Thank you very much. What? Soda smirked just for a second, and then he accepted the CEO's order. I was left standing there with my mouth open. Hmm. I'm so glad I got rid of that useless jerk. We need to apologize to the client for the delay. The item that the CEO was talking about was apparently very important. He gave the client a call to apologize for the incident. Please accept my sincere apologies for all the trouble. One of our employees, Sota Nagato, is responsible for everything. Oh, Mr. Nagato's in charge. Hey, don't worry about it. Huh? Oh, thank you so much. We're aware that the deadline we requested was short. I'm sure Mr. Nagato will take care of everything. I have trust in him. Please, tell him I said hi. Well, about Nagato. Thanks again for calling. And then the client hung up the phone. The CEO sat in front of the screen with a blank face because he couldn't tell the client about what had happened with Nagato. The next day, something unusual started happening in the office. All right, who's up for some drinks tonight? Regular office work hours were over and the CEO stood up. However, Nobody else stood up to follow him. 
What's going on? We have so much more work to do. <laughs> what? It wasn't just one employee. Everybody was desperately typing into their computers to get their work done. There's too much to do. We can't finish anything on time. Don't be an idiot. It's no different from yesterday. Well. Why can't you finish it? Tell me why. We always made Soda do most of the workload. What? Uh, oh. I looked around and every single employee had their head down. This can't be. They all made Soda do all their work? We didn't want to work overtime, so we made him do all the tiring work. He made little mistakes and stuff, but he did it anyways. I mean, he didn't complain about it either. Even if that's true, why is it that you all can't finish what Soda was doing all on his own? Nobody opened their mouth, and nobody could answer the CEO's question. There are six people in the programming department right now. I guess nobody wanted to admit that we couldn't even do one-sixth of the work Soda was doing every day. Anyways, get on it right away! You're not going home until you're finished! We spent the next months in hell, and our work hours grew longer and longer. We got phone calls from clients all day, every day. Every client that called asked for Soda. They didn't want to talk to anybody else. Oh, Mr. Nagato's not there? Okay, bye. Damn, he's not in. I'll try to catch him some other time. Was? Mr. Nagato's away? Well, I always thought he worked too hard. He deserves a break. Please, tell him I called. All of the clients hung up once they found out Soda wasn't at the office. Everybody was freaking out. We didn't know what was going on. The phone rang again, and the CEO took the call. It was from our most valued client. Hi there, sir. It's good to hear from you. How can I help you today? Well, actually, I wanted to ask you guys to do another job for me. Can I talk to Mr. Nagato about it? I'm so sorry, sir. Nagato has left the company. He's gone? I see. I guess I'll have to take back my request then. Huh? It's a shame that he's gone. He was a trustworthy employee. He was always so kind when we asked for something or whenever we needed his help. Many other companies also said the same thing about Soda. Our clients kept canceling their job offers after hearing that Soda had left our company. We found out that Soda kept getting all those phone calls because the clients relied on him to fix all the mistakes caused by other employees. He was also very kind and considerate and always put himself in the client's shoes. That's why so many of our clients trusted him. We should ask him to come back. I suggested we bring Soda back to the company. The CEO and all the other employees agreed. We couldn't possibly keep working like this. However... I'm so sorry I am! Please help us! Can you come back and work with us? I'm sorry. I really can't. Please! We'll do anything! Without you, this company will... The CEO kneeled and put his head against the floor. Please don't do that. I can't go back no matter what. I work for a different company, and I'm dedicated to them. He was already settled, and nothing the CEO said could change his mind. After that, the company continued to fall apart, and it went bankrupt six months later. The employees who had forced Soda to do their work all lost their jobs, and the CEO ended up deep in debt. Obviously, I lost my job too. I would love to have you join my team at my company. Are you interested by any chance? But Soda introduced me to his new office, and luckily I didn't end up jobless. Soda had only been there for a little while, but he was already in charge of his team. Lately, I find myself drawn to him because of his sincere attitude towards his work. But it's still my little secret. I'm Fuyuki. I'm currently dating my coworker from my workplace, Aya. Aya is a superb beauty and is a great worker too. There were many men in my company, from coworkers the same age as me to my superiors, who were after her. Just when I was thinking that I wanted to confess my love to her before anyone else got her first, it was Aya who said, I feel at ease when I'm with you, Fuyuki. Hey, <laughs> wanna date me? What? Really? Are you sure you're fine with me? Thought I was in heaven when she told me that. Although my jealous coworker did tell me that I should stay away from her for some reason. But thanks to Aya's support, I did well at work. And when I introduced her to my parents, they teared up with joy. 
They blessed us and was positive about us getting married. I thought that my life was going uphill. Then one day, Aya had a troubled face at work. What's wrong? Uh, some of my co-workers are leaving me out. There's a girl who's acting cold towards me. Apparently, there were times that Aya was the only one who wasn't invited to the co-worker gathering of girls the same age as her. And sometimes they even ignored her when she greeted them. She was being bullied. Were they leaving her out just because she was cute? And I couldn't forgive them, so I talked to my superior about it. At the end, the girls who were bullying Aya were scolded by their boss. I think some of the girls found it awkward to stay in the company and went on to quit their job. Well, it's their own fault for making my precious Aya sad. Because of that incident, Aya became more and more clinging towards me. And even during lunch break and after work, she was always by my side. Hey, why don't you come to my house next time? I want to introduce you to my parents. Really? I would love to. I'll go in my best suit. Gosh, <laughs> you don't have to try that hard. Just come in your everyday clothes. You look great in anything, Fuyuki. That weekend, I went to Aya's parents' house. In that splendid house of hers, there waiting for us was her mother, who looked just like Aya, and her father, a thin, earnest-looking man. The two seemed to be watching over me very carefully and asked me questions such as, How old are you? Are you really single? And Aya, are you sure about this guy? I couldn't help but feel slightly uneasy after hearing such questions. I'm sorry, my parents were annoying and persistent with the questions. <laughs> I have an older brother, but I'm the only daughter in this family, so they're sometimes overly protective about me. <laughs> I'm really sorry. You must be tired. Nah, I totally understand that they'd be extra careful about their precious daughter. By the way, I hope they like me. It's fine. <laughs> You're a man who's too good for me. Have confidence. Because Aya looked at me with her cute face and showed me a huge smile, I was head over heels for her. Uh, I want to get married to her quickly. Oh, but we have to have a family meeting before that. Maybe I can reserve an expensive restaurant by a Japanese garden so that we can watch the autumn leaves while our family enjoys the meal. Even after that, we spent our lovey-dovey days together. That day, I had just finished a huge project that I was in charge of, and was out on a trip at a hotel by the beach with Aya in celebration of the project's success. We were spending a luxurious time at the beach as we flirted together as always. After we hung out for a while, Aya went to the beach cafe to take a rest. I went out for another swim in the sea in front of the cafe. After that, I headed back to the cafe that Aya waited at, but... Ah! I heard Aya scream. I pushed through the crowd and ran towards the cafe. Standing there was the cafe waitress who had turned into a furious monster, and Aya who laid on the sandy beach with an arm all covered in red. she get injured? Aya, are you okay? Uh, this person suddenly... What? Is this ketchup? Who are you? What do you want? Why would you do such a thing? Uh, you forgot already after doing such a terrible thing? You scum! Hearing the angry shout, many people gathered to watch. Slightly panicking, I went in between the waitress and Aya. You, you're this woman's current boyfriend, right? I saw you talking to her just now. Yeah, I am. What an awful woman. You stole my older sister's husband and dumped him. And now you're with someone new already? My older sister got a divorce because of you, and now she's a different person. She's depressed and gloomy and won't come out of her room. And yet you ran away without apologizing. Disgusting, really. I really have no idea who you are, but you're mistaking me for someone else. Let's go, Fuyuki. We don't have time for this weirdo. Aya pulled my arm. She was correct. If we continued staying close to this weird woman, we didn't know what she would do next. With that, I tried to leave as well, but... Are you running away again? Like you did back then? Hey, boyfriend! Listen to this and you'll realize that woman's true nature! Saying that, the waitress pulled out her phone out of the pocket of her apron. So as she played a certain audio, I fell into shock and was unable to say anything. So you knew that he was married, but went and seduced him, yeah? Because he said that he'll increase my salary if I go out with him. It's not that I seduced him first, so I I'm not wrong. 
It's all your fault that my sister is crying every day. So what? Kazuyo picked me over your sister because she wasn't as attractive as I am. It's her own fault for being ugly and introverted. I paid the alimony, so stop bothering me. Ugh, you two sisters are so annoying. The voice from that audio was no doubt Aya's. Aya's face turned pale blue and she was shivering. According to the waitress, Aya became the lover of her boss at her part-time job when she was a student. However, that boss was married and his wife was this waitress's older sister. This woman seduced my sister's husband, even though he had his wedding ring on. On top of that, when we found out about her adultery, she went crying to her parents and had them pay for the alimony. She didn't apologize once and ran away. Oh, you coward. I see. That's why your father was worried and asked to make sure I was single many times. As I murmured that in a slight daze, Aya gasped and said, No, everything she's saying is a lie. It's all made up. And claimed that she was innocent. I was so hurt that I was barely able to stand upright. I shook Aya off and went back to the hotel. With that, I took my bags and went straight home. When I told my coworker about it, he sighed saying, That's why I told you that you should stay away from her. Aya and I are from the same university, and I heard about that rumor before. It was quite a famous story, so there were some people in this company who knew about it too. Oh yeah, the girls who quit the company who are around Aya's age also knew about it. I think Aya went after you because you didn't know about her past. She used to say that her dream was to marry a man who loved her unconditionally, quit her job, and did live an easy life as a housewife. You should have told me. You didn't have the heart to listen back then, did you? That was very true. Love is blind. I guess it was my own fault. After that, I had tried to cling on to me, but because I continued to ignore her, she went crying to our boss. After getting the boss on her side, she started picking on me using him. I see, so this was her true nature. I was tired of everything and decided to quit the company. I had said some shitty last words saying, Never show your face in front of me again before I left. But even Aya, who lived life getting away with everything, had karma hit her back. A video of the incident that occurred at the beach spread all over social media. I guess one of the bystanders uploaded it online. It was uploaded as a video titled Ketchup Woman. And although her face was covered, people who were acquaintances would have realized it was her at one glance. She was whispered and talked about at work as the cheater and the devil who seduces men. And even her boss started acting cold towards her. She escaped that environment by quitting the company. After all that, she went to her parents for help, but the video had spread rapidly that even her neighbors knew about it. The rumors don't stop because you're here. Never come back again. With that, her own parents cut ties with her. Fuyuki, I'm sorry. Let's get back together. Hey, uh, can I live with you? I have nowhere to go. I can get married to you if you want. I got a call from her saying such nonsense, but I hung up after saying, whatever. I guess I'm really not a good judge of character. Luckily, the next place I started working at was a company of mostly men. I think I'll stay here for a while and heal my scars. <sighs> I wonder when I can get married. Jeez, women are really scary. My name is Shiori Kato. I'm 25 years old. I hate my father. My father works for a famous company and is quite high ranking. As a worker, he's seen as outstanding. But behind closed doors, he's a good for nothing deadbeat. I earn the money around here, so I get to see how to use it. You can't live without me, so don't you dare go against my word. My father has a habit of saying that he is the head of the household and we are the ones being fed. He doesn't help with the chores, and he spends money like crazy. Because of this, he didn't give enough money to the rest of us. What are you knitting? A sweater for you. It was rare for my mother to buy any personal items for herself, and I barely got any allowance. Naturally, my mother did her best. Even though my father wanted appreciation for his work, he never once showed any appreciation for my mother. On top of that, he had an affair in the past. Of course, my mother went on a furious rampage. <laughs> Wait, let's talk this out, yeah? 
Since then, my father has calmed down. He's less imposing than he used to be, so he's probably having another affair. Hello? Who am I speaking with? I don't have any evidence, but I know. My father is just that type of man. No one knows my father's true nature, except us. Good morning! Even if you call it a split personality, he seems nice on the outside, so others around him adore him. And thanks to that, he was selected as town councilman last year. For a man like him to be chosen, I thought it was the end of the world. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing, just feeling melancholic. The guy who looks like he's worried about me is Daiki Azuma. He's also 25. It's been three years since we started dating. I met him at a college lecture we both took. Hey, do you like mystery novels? Uh, yeah. I was the one who initiated the conversation. During our lectures, he never paid attention and was always reading a book. I already thought he was good looking, but what he was reading intrigued me as well. I love this author. They don't write much, so as soon as their books come out, I make sure to buy them. Hey, me too. We got good taste. We shared the same interests and hit it off with each other, so we spent more time together, even outside of lectures. Wow, look at the time. Yeah, it's gotten late. Ready to head home? Yeah. If I go home, my father will be there. To me, home is just an uncomfortable world. That's why I ended up depending on Daiki. I don't want to go home. Huh? Those days continued, and shortly after, we started dating. He was kind and grateful of even the smallest things, and if he did wrong by me, he'd sincerely apologize. Since he was that great a boyfriend, we didn't have any big bumps in our relationship, even after we graduated and started working. My father is the complete opposite. He's never grateful, nor does he apologize. I hate my father. Why? Because at home, he... Daiki always silently listened to my complaints. He would silently listen without passing judgment on me or my father. I thought he was kind for that. I feel like if I had someone like Daiki at home, I could live stress-free. We appreciate and treat each other well. That'd be the ideal family. So that's why. I want you to marry me. I had no reason to turn down his proposal to me a month ago. <sighs> Another sigh. Don't you feel down? You're going to my house, you know. Why would I? We're getting married, so naturally I have to greet your family, right? It's not that. You have to meet my father. That father. Yep. My father thinks of me and my mother as property. Every time I came home late from our dates, I would get yelled at. Well, I ignored him, but... Even if you ask for my hand in marriage, it won't be that easy. That's why in the beginning he shouldn't come, and we should just get the registry in order. But he just said... Even if you say that, family is family. Even if we try to back out of seeing him, we'll get involved some way or another. And said it so naturally. Family. If I didn't have that word binding us, I could escape from that man. Not just me, but my mother could escape from her suffering as well. We're here. The time has come. Daiki and my father are going to meet. I'm always grateful to your daughter. This time I'd like to- You. You're the good-for-nothing bastard that's always dragging my daughter around. Whatever you're going to say, my daughter's not going to do it. I'm not accepting the two of you dating anytime soon, either. Hurry up and get out of here, you piece of crap! As soon as Daiki started talking, my father was having none of it, and spoke to him in a high-handed manner. However, Daiki was not intimidated. Father-in-law, I'd like to marry Shiori-san. I told you, my daughter won't do it! Fine, I'll leave. But is it really okay for me to leave? I told you to get out a bunch of times already! Since I came to meet you, I prepared a gift for you. Daiki took a box out from his bag. You sure are shallow, thinking you could win me over with gifts. Sorry, but I'm not gonna trouble myself with that. Actually, it's the opposite. This gift is stuffed with troublesome things. Troublesome things? 
My father thought he was being made a fool, but his expression changed in an instant when he opened the box and checked the contents. He stared at the inside of the box with wide eyes. Once again, my name is Daiki. I've come to ask for your permission to marry Shiori-san. I gave you this present because I wanted to get to know Shiori-san's family a bit more. <laughs> of course, we are old enough to where we can get married without parental consent, but I would still like to have no objections from her family. What do you think? <laughs> I said, what do you think? Good. <laughs> I wish you both happiness. Phew, that's done and over with. What was in that box? It's something you asked me to do. Worked out better than I thought it would. One month earlier. <sighs> if I had the chance to marry you, it'd be great to cut ties with my father. Cut ties? Yeah, I want my mother and I to get away from him. I want to be free. Did your mother ever think about divorcing him? She thought about it, but my father is strongly opposed to it. There's no conclusive evidence for a divorce either. And even if she wanted to get evidence, my father kept all the money, so her hands were tied. Gathering proof of an affair isn't easy. My father became especially cautious after becoming the town councilman. Okay then, leave it to me. Hmm? What are you gonna do? I won't do anything bad. I'm a pro at investigations. That's right. After graduating, Daiki started working at a detective bureau. He personally went out of his way to do a background search on my father. It seems like he gave the results of his findings to my father in that box. It's best you don't know what was in the box. Huh? There were a lot of disgusting things he'd done. I didn't ask about the details, but it seems like it wasn't just proof about an affair. There was some evidence that could lead to him losing his job as a town councilman. Daiki didn't release it to the public, but used it as a means to shield me and my mother from my father. Soon after that, my mother got a divorce. Unlike the last time, the divorce papers went through smoothly. Cheers! Proper division of property was also done, so it seems there won't be any living troubles. That's also thanks to Daiki. And we got married without any problems. We were able to have a small but happy wedding with our close friends and my father out of the picture. My father lost the next election, and the people that once adored him scattered away like spiders. And now he's barely scraping by working at an acquaintance's factory. Daiki never released what was in the box publicly, so I bet his true colors were exposed at some point. A punishment for torturing us. I think it's a nice touch. My name is Maina Suruta. I'm a businesswoman. Most of the employees are men, and less than 10 women are working with me. I'm the only female working in the sales department. I used to work in the office, but was offered a chance in the sales department a few years back, and I've been working there ever since. I work with clients that I've known from when I was in the office, and although there are some obstacles, I feel like this job is rewarding. Many of the other employees helped me out. But there was this one guy, Sano. He was a real pain in the ass. Sano was four years older than me, and he had the best work performance. He was also handsome, so I liked him back when I worked in the office. However, now that I work directly under him... Hey, Mina, a client's never going to like you if you look so unfriendly, you know? Come on, smile! You're a woman! Flaunt it! Use it to your advantage for once! Uh, what do you mean? You're being inappropriate. I could sue you for sexual harassment. What? You think you could talk back to me like that? Do you know how many people were scared of me back in the day? I have 50, no, more like a hundred men at my beck and call. If you make any more cheeky comments, you don't know what might happen to you on your way home at night. <laughs> Why does he have the top work performance in our department? I'm so sick of the way he tries to act almighty. Ugh, I want to punch myself for thinking he was handsome even for a second. I tried hard to shake off what Sano had said to me, and I left the office with a colleague to get some new clients. Yoshida is a junior colleague and is on the quiet side. He's diligent and he looks up to me. However, his work performance hasn't been that great lately, and he gets scolded a lot. I wish I could help him get a deal to impress the bosses. One day, 
I began to feel like luck was on my side as we visited a company. The guy who came to talk to us used to go to the same high school as me. He remembered me and said, This is just what I was looking for! I know that I can trust you, and your colleague seems like a nice guy too! He decided to sign the contract with us. We went back to the office to make a report, but the manager was away on vacation. I had forgotten he said he would be gone for a week. Yoshida and I decided to prepare the paperwork and sort out the arrangements. But then... What is that? Wait, is that... You got the contract with Manwa? How did you trick him into signing the contract? He's so difficult, everybody who tried has been sent back empty-handed! Well, when Yoshida and I went, he just smiled and agreed to sign it. Huh. I see, I see. So Yoshida's in charge of this one. Hey, Yoshida, give me those papers. I'll take over from here. What? Um, sir, please don't! Sano, how dare you ask him that? It's so dirty of you to try to take his accomplishments! We got the contract because Yoshida worked hard to perfect his presentation! You think I'm stealing his job? No way! I'm just scared that you guys will mess it all up. I have to take over to make sure the client sees that our company is reliable. If it goes well, you can try the next time. Okay, Yoshida? Nothing good comes from going against me. I used to be the leader of a motorcycle gang. I'm brave, and I have a lot more charisma than both of you. So come on, be smart, and do the right thing, Yoshida. No way! Yoshida and I will make sure we make no mistakes! Sano tisked at me, looking extremely disappointed. Fine, whatever. He said as he finally left us alone. However, we soon found out that he hadn't given up at all. A few weeks later, Yoshida suddenly took a few days off. I knew something was off, so I called him. I can't do it anymore! Mr. Sano keeps giving me crap about the new client! How I'll never get it right! How the company's reputation will get ruined if I fail! How I'm going to take responsibility when I screw up! He nags me all day long! I can't get Mr. Sano's voice out of my head! Every time I try to go to work, I get stomach aches! I just can't do it! I'm sorry. I think I just really need a break. Ugh, Sano! I was furious. I went to Sano's desk to protest. It was unbelievable. Sano had already taken Yoshida's papers. He was calling our client to tell him he would be taking over. I called the CEO of Manwa Company, but... I heard about Mr. Sano taking over. He said Yoshida was sick. I hope he feels better soon. Sano had already talked him into it. When my boss came back... I heard that Sano is doing a great job after Yoshida irresponsibly left. Given this situation, I couldn't say much more because it could cause more trouble for Yoshida. I was so frustrated, but the clients always come first. I couldn't do anything to cause trouble for them. You do know how to check delivery dates, right? If you don't, you should let me know. I care a lot for my fellow employees. I'm willing to help you anytime. Oh, I felt like punching his cocky smile into his skull. But I did my best to fight my urges. A few weeks later, we finalized a deal with a client. Sano invited everyone for a good job party at an izakaya. Yeah, guys! Good job! Manwa Company is going to give us another job! We did it! Everybody was worried about Yoshida, who hadn't come into work in a while. However, since Sano had our bosses on his side, we all knew there would be consequences if we didn't go to the party. Nobody wanted to be there, so the party was far from lively. Sano started to get upset at everyone's attitude. Hey, where's the energy? We did a good job. Aren't you guys happy at all? We're happy that the job went well. We're just worried about Yoshida. We feel bad about him. Huh? Seriously? You're gonna bring him up now? You shouldn't waste your time on such a weakling. It's called survival of the fittest. He's too soft. He'll eventually disappear from this industry anyways. How can you say that? You're the one who used dirty methods to push him over the edge. You shouldn't... But before I finished... Sano poured his beer all over my head. Drink it! It's a beer shower to celebrate our accomplishments! Come on, drink the beer! I could see everybody sitting there, stunned. A waitress brought me a towel to wipe my hair, but I couldn't wipe off the rage fuming inside of me. You messed with the wrong person! Huh? I said, 
fact, you messed with the wrong person, you useless piece of crap! You wanna know what I believe in? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth! I always pay back what I get. You better brace yourself. Huh? What? Hold on! Ah! I grabbed Sano's shirt collar and lifted him up off the floor. His face lost color and he looked terrified as he hung there, swinging back and forth. I pulled his face closer and poured my beer onto his head. Sano hung there helplessly as he started to shiver pathetically, probably from fear. You said it's eat or be eaten, right? The weak are meant to disappear, right? So let's see if you are meant to survive or if you're meant to be beaten to a pulp! No! Stop it! Stop it! I'm sorry! I really am! Boss, please don't do it! You said you were going to become a better person! If this guy did anything to anger you, I, I will hit him for you! Please don't get your hands dirty over some scum! Uh, did she say boss? I recognized her the moment I stepped into the Izakaya. She used to be one of my crew back when I was a motorcycle gang leader. I was the 16th generation leader of Minodora, known as Sonic Speed Mina. Yo, Sano, you said you used to be in a motorcycle gang. You would have heard of my name if you were in a gang. Tell me, which gang did you belong to? No, no, it's not true. It was all a lie. I made it all up. I wasn't part of a gang. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have lied. Please don't hit me. I'm so scared. I'm not the one you need to apologize to. <laughs> Yoshida, you idiot! Kneel and put your head on the ground. Apologize as if your life depends on it! Yes, ma'am! After that, we made Sano apologize to Yoshida over a video phone call. Everybody took out their phones to record Sano's humiliating apology. I reported everything that happened to my boss. He seemed to take it hard. This acted as a trigger. Mr. Sano once took credit for the deal I had worked hard for! Me too! He did it twice to me. We found out that Sano had forced many other victims to pass on their work so he could get credit for it. Our boss lost trust in Sano. He left the company the next month. Huh, I guess he couldn't take it anymore. He's having a hard time finding a new job since the video of him apologizing at the Izakaya was posted online. I heard that he's becoming a day laborer and is barely holding his life together. Huh, serves him right. I thought I would get some kind of punishment, but instead... Thank you for showing me what kind of person he was. I'm so sorry for not seeing it sooner. My boss apologized to me, which was unexpected. Oh yeah, Yoshida came back to the company after Sano left. He looks so much happier and seems to be enjoying work every day. His work performance has improved a lot since he came back. I guess I gotta step it up so he doesn't beat me. <laughs> My name is Mayu. I'm 27. I work at a small business venture with about 50 employees. I've worked here ever since I graduated from university, and I have no complaints about the work environment or the job itself. My colleagues, as well as my bosses, are all wonderful people. The CEO is amazing at what he does. He brings in a lot of jobs for us. He's able to handle everything well and is well known in the industry. The company is doing a great job thanks to him. However... Hey, you. Y yes Yeah, you need to finish this by today. Th that's a huge pile! Huh? What, are you saying you can't do it? All of this today? How dare you talk back to me when you're just a little pawn? Fine, I don't care then. What? Leave immediately. Don't ever come back. B but... There is a huge problem with the CEO's personality. He is extremely professional when it comes to business, but he has too much confidence in himself and expects others to worship him. Anybody who tries to protest or stand up for themselves will get fired on the spot, without any exception. I've heard about many capable employees quitting the company because they couldn't stand him. A junior colleague that I trained also left the company because the CEO didn't like him. On top of that, he's a total ladies' man. Every time a young and cute employee joins the company, he makes them stay right by his side. It never matters what department she belongs to. He's very unprofessional when it comes to women. There was an employee a while ago who was newly assigned to my department. The CEO wanted her to be his secretary. She'll know that you did that just to keep her by your side. It'll make us look unprofessional. My boss protested, but the CEO said, Just tell her everyone's moving departments. He's such an idiot. 
Why would employees be moving to different departments when the year had just started? What a fool. He chose his secretary solely based on looks. So I wasn't surprised to see that his office was always full of female employees that were charming, but not so smart. Hey Miko, honey, get me a cup of tea. Of course, I'll be right back. Is this a hostess bar? Huh. <sighs> the CEO was just past saving. However, one day he announced that he was getting married. He was going to have a wedding, but only the executives and employees who had worked for a long time were invited. I was sure I wasn't invited since I've only been working there for five years, but... Yo, 15th of next month. Keep it open. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. He happened to spot me as he was looking for a receptionist, and I ended up getting invited. The day of the wedding. I was on my way, walking to the bus stop. Since I was the receptionist, I needed to get there early. However... Ah! I saw a woman hunched over, crouching on the ground. Mmm... No, I don't have time to go over to her. She's probably just feeling a little under the weather. She'll feel better once she gets some rest. Oh! But I couldn't just walk past her. I happened to see her stomach, and I saw her baby bump. She was pregnant. Um... Are you okay? It, it hurts! Oh no, she's pregnant. She has contractions. I need to get her to a hospital right away. I'm gonna call a cab for you. There were no hospitals nearby that had a maternity ward. I caught a taxi that was passing by and got into the cab with her. I had forgotten about the wedding. All I had in mind was that I needed to get this woman and her baby to a hospital as soon as possible. We rode in the cab for a little over 10 minutes. We arrived at the hospital and the woman was immediately taken away. I had contacted her husband, but he hadn't arrived yet. I couldn't leave since I was worried, so I stayed in the waiting room. Excuse me, are you Mayu? Oh, you must be her husband. Her husband arrived a few minutes later. He bowed down several times, expressing his gratitude. I was relieved that things were going to be okay now, and I finally felt the weight in my stomach gone. Ah! Suddenly, my phone rang. I looked at the phone screen. It was the CEO. I was significantly late. The wedding had already started. Uh, uh, hello? Where the hell are you? What do you think you're doing? Come to Manwa Hotel immediately! I I'm so sorry, sir. I knew this was going to happen, but hearing him yell at me, I broke into a cold sweat. Are you going to Manwa Hotel? Yes, I have to attend a wedding. Oh, then... I'm sorry, I really have to go! I rushed to the wedding as fast as I could, but it had already started. One of the wedding staff let me in, but I felt awkward entering the room. I noticed the CEO glaring at me as I headed to my seat. I wanted to start crying. <sighs> Everything seemed to be going well. My being late did not affect much of the wedding. The bride and groom were going around the tables, getting their picture taken with the guests at each table. They arrived at my table with the cameraman, but then the CEO said, Leave her out of the picture. As he pointed straight at me. Why? We're never going to meet her again anyways. <gasps> you know what I'm saying, right, Mayu? Fired. As soon as I understood what was going to happen, I started to tear up. But just then... I'm sorry that I'm so late. The husband of the woman I had just saved came into the hall. Huh? Why is he here? Hi. Oh no, don't worry about it. Family emergencies always come first. No, I really feel bad. Oh. The husband noticed I was sitting at the table. I knew it! You were one of the guests too! Uh... I overheard you talking about Manwa Hotel, so I thought that maybe I could find you here. Um, may I ask who... Thank you for saving my wife's life earlier today. They are both okay. I don't know how to thank you enough. Huh? So anyways, you seem to be crying. What seems to be the matter? Well, I found out that I was just fired. What? We're supposed to be celebrating! Who's the idiot that ruined it? Um... No, it's a misunderstanding! The husband was furious, and the CEO desperately tried to line up excuses to get out of the tight spot. I didn't really. What? Wait a minute, are you the one that fired her? Uh, no, hey! I never said that you were fired, right? Right? You made it pretty clear. He's such a jerk. The sorrow I was feeling changed into fury. I couldn't help but stand up to tell him off. You are always like this, you know. Every time you don't like someone, you just get rid of them. You don't even try to listen to their side of the story. 
Plus, you like women so much that you collect all the attractive female employees to keep around in your office. Every time I go in there, it's like being in a hostess bar. I don't want to work at your company anyways. I quit! You... Honey? Uh, uh-oh. Gotta go to... the restroom. The CEO left the wedding as white as a ghost. His older brother was my best friend. Unfortunately, his brother passed away a while back. It turns out that the husband knew the CEO since elementary school. He taught the CEO about business management when the company was going bad and has been helping him out ever since. I always thought the CEO was good at business, but the husband was behind it all. The husband knew that the CEO told people, I'm the reason this company is so successful. However, he decided to turn a blind eye because the CEO was his best friend's little brother. But the husband told me, If I were to cut ties with him, the company would go bankrupt. After that, I ended up staying at the company. I work as the CEO's secretary now. The CEO was afraid that the husband would leave him and he would lose the company. He cried and desperately begged, I'm sorry, don't leave me! The husband agreed to continue helping the CEO, but only if he made me his secretary. I'm his watchdog. I report everything the CEO does to the husband. Uh, would you like me to make some tea for you? Yes, I'm getting thirsty. That would be great. The CEO is super nice now, probably because I scare him. But since he mistreated us for so many years, it's the least he can do, right? I'm Yu Tanazaki. I'm 35 and single. I worked as a system engineer for a tech company for seven years. I started my own business five years ago. Right now, we run and operate a matchmaking website. One day on my way home from work, I saw this homeless guy sitting on the streets. I knew him. Aizawa? Aizawa, right? Oh, Tanazaki, hey! He recognized me too. He started crying. I... I started my own business, but everything went down the drain. He was always good with people. He was way more talented than me. I never thought I'd see him like this. I guess you never know. All right, man. You need a job? Come work for me. I gave him a job and a place to stay. He was a brilliant guy. He got along with my colleagues, too. He was a good friend of mine, so I was glad I could be of help. Hey, I finished the list of new users for this month. Wow, that was fast. Thanks, man. Of course. It's the least I can do. Plus, I want to start my own business again in the future, so... He was really motivated. I put him in charge of all kinds of projects. Soon, he was overlooking most of the projects in the company. Then, a few months later, something happened. One day, I got into a car accident. I had to be hospitalized for a month. Even after I got out of the hospital, I took it easy for a while. But I had no idea what was going on on the inside. A strike? Yeah, we're all gonna go on strike, unless you agree to our terms, said Aizawa with a cold look in his eyes. It was clear that everyone was on his side. I didn't even know what to say. While I was away, he got everyone on his side. I also found out later that he was spreading all kinds of false rumors about me. He told everyone that I was a cold-hearted man who abandoned his wife and kids. He even said that I made them pay for my debt. Needless to say, those were all lies. I mean, I ran a matchmaking website. Why did they even believe him? Sir, you're bringing down our reputation. We're gonna go with Aizawa. We don't need you anymore. Hold on, what are you saying? Listen to me. Then Aizawa slammed the table. I didn't know what to say. So, what's it gonna be? Are you gonna meet our demands or no? If they went on strike, the website would go under in no time. I couldn't let that happen. What is it you want? Easy. You leave the rest to us. You can keep your name, but we'll be making all the decisions from now on. What? You mean... Yeah, you're fired. Where did it all go wrong? I was angry and confused. I had no choice but to agree to his terms. I packed up my things and went home. I was this close to losing my mind. Was he planning this all along? Why would he do this? But I wasn't done yet. I had to do something. I looked into him to find out what he was up to before I ran into him in the streets. Turns out he was married once. He married some rich girl, a daughter of a big company. He even had a child with her, but he abandoned them a few years ago. How could he say all those terrible things about me? He's a good liar, I'll give him that. But still, why did he need to bring me down? 
few months later, I contacted his ex-wife. Ah, uh, Izawa. He was a terrible man. He cheated on me countless times, and he was up to his neck in debt. He was in debt? Looks like all those things he said about me, it was all him. He's a sociopath. He can't stand being looked down on. He'll do anything to come out on top and get what he wants. She told me he'd even try to take over her father's company. He was a troublemaker. Plus, I want to start my own business again in the future, so... That's what he said. It was all a lie. He just wanted to take over my company. I told his ex about what happened. She sympathized with me. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. I decided to take action. When I started my company, I built the user management system myself. I created a back door in the code to make things more efficient. A back door is like a secret tunnel that lets you control a program from outside. I used the back door and snuck back into the database. Then I froze the system. I could hear the panic, literally. What's going on? They were right to be worried. Their whole system was down and nobody knew why. Okay, now. Let's go. We opened the door and went inside. Aizawa was flipping out. What is this error? Find out now. Hurry up. We're working on it. Stop yelling. Aizawa and his employees were fighting. I just stood there and watched them. Then they noticed us. Aizawa too. He froze up. What are you doing here? Lying to people to get what you want. I guess you haven't changed a bit. Pathetic. The employee started talking. You abandon your wife and child, and you run a matchmaking website? Give me a break. The employee started talking again. Aizawa was done for, and his ex kept going. Oh, by the way, I told the loan sharks where you are. Better get your things and run. Ah! Aizawa was screwed. I walked past him and went to the nearest computer. Let me see. Sir, thank you. I fixed the error and the system was back up. Everyone seemed really relieved. <laughs> Glad that worked. Aizawa went missing after that. I heard the loan sharks are still looking for him. And so I was back. I finally got my company back. The employees apologized to me over and over again for believing Aizawa. They started working even harder for me. After a storm comes a calm. Aizawa caused me a lot of trouble, but our company was stronger than ever. I guess you never know what life throws at I'm Keisuke Komine. I'm 40 years old. I own a small tech company. I was always busy with work, but it was a lot of fun. And this is my wife, Atsuko. She was 7 years younger than me. She did everything around the house for me. We've been married for 10 years now. We never had kids, but she was an amazing chef. I really enjoyed living with her. Hey, I heard a client talking about one of your articles the other day. Great job! Oh yeah? That's great! Good to hear! She studied journalism in college. She worked as a writer. She wasn't that famous yet, but she recently wrote some articles for a pretty popular magazine. Hey, that reminds me. I gotta go on a business trip next month for one of my articles. Again? Is it that fashion magazine? The one that rates your outfit every time you go see them? Yeah, it's pretty annoying, but it's work, so... There was this editor who worked for a fashion magazine. He basically judged the writers based on what they wore. She had to get new clothes every time she went to see them. Oh, well, I know it's part of your job, so get whatever you need. Thank you. I'm gonna write a really good article. I didn't really have any hobbies, and I barely ate out. I wasn't that interested in money, so I had no idea how much she was spending on things like clothes, shoes, bags, etc. She was always going away on business trips for work. Sometimes it was just for one night, and other times she went away for a couple of days. She was flying all over the country. I gotta be able to move around quickly if I want to make it as a professional writer, so... She had a point, so I never put much thought into it. Plus, she always got me souvenirs, so I didn't really mind. Enjoy your trip, Atsuko! Thank you. You're so understanding. I'm glad I married you. Life was good. Or so I thought. One day... You're going away again? To Hokkaido? Yeah, I know it's sudden, but I'm sorry. She was going away for four days to Hokkaido to do an article about the tourism industry there. I guess I had no reason to say no, but still... 
She's been going on these business trips a lot recently. But this was a good thing for her career, so... I kept quiet. But I was so naive. I had no idea what was going on. If I could turn back time, I'd tell myself to look into her spendings, keep a close eye on her, and manage your own money. Sometimes I envied her. She was always traveling. I wish I could do that. No, no, it's too late for that now. I knew I wouldn't be able to do that once I started my own company. There's no going back now. I told myself everything was going to be okay and tried to move on. But then... On the day she left for her trip, I had the day off. I was usually working whenever she was away on business, so this was a nice change of pace. I woke up early, watered the plants, fed my fish, and enjoyed a nice breakfast with coffee. The plants, the fish, the coffee beans... These were all things that Atsuko brought. For lunch, I tried cooking for the first time in my life. I made some curry with vegetables that were left in the fridge. Now put the curry powder in the pot. Ah, the potatoes are melting. She always cooked for me, so this was all new to me. It was actually pretty fun. I felt like I was back in college or something. I put the pot on the stove and started surfing the net. Once the curry was done, I sat down and turned on the TV. They were doing some story about this new cafe that opened up. I'm here at the new cafe. Lots of young couples here. Let's see what they have to say about this place. The cafe looked pretty fancy. But then, I saw something I couldn't believe. What?! She came home from her business trip. I'm home. Ah, oh, I'm exhausted. Feels so good to be home. I was waiting for her in the living room. I got right down to business before she could say anything. Hey, um, I want a divorce. I'm suing you for damages too. $50,000. She looked confused. Then her face turned red. What? Why? For what? Explain yourself! Let me ask you this. Where were you for the past few days, huh? I told you, Hokkaido. I'm doing an article about the tourism industry there and... And that took you three days? Let me guess. You probably finished the interview in a day and spent the rest of your time partying. What? No! How can you even say that? Atsuko, just tell me the truth. You're having an affair, aren't you? I sighed. She was gonna play dumb. Ten years. We've been together for ten years, and you just threw it all away. Hold on. I don't know what you saw, but... Look, sometimes I go out to eat with people from the publisher and stuff, so... Is that the best you can come up with? I'm telling you the truth! Please believe me! You just don't get it, do you? All the money I spent on her? I thought I was helping her out, but she was cheating on me all along! I had no idea! I was furious! I grabbed the remote and turned on the TV! I started playing the recording from a few days ago. Atsuko's face turned blue. There she was, holding hands with some young guy at the cafe. This is you, isn't it? They filmed this in Tokyo, not Hokkaido. So yeah, who's the guy, huh? He is an editor from the publisher, and he joined us at the last minute, and I... I... I had nothing to say to her. She couldn't even keep her story straight anymore. If you're gonna lie, you should come up with a better story. You're embarrassing yourself. Listen, it's not like that, okay? He's just a business partner, that's it! Stop lying to me! How many times, huh? I'm so sorry. This was my first time, honest. I raised my voice at her. She finally spilled it. She said she was feeling lonely. What does that even mean? I wanted kids, but... You know, and he was so nice to me, and... and I... So you two became close, huh? Did he ask you out, or was it the other way around? He asked me out! Please believe me! Strange. I actually talked to Akio Sato. He said you came on to him. When I mentioned his name, her face went pale. I looked into him. It wasn't that hard. What? I asked her friends and colleagues about him. It didn't take long for me to find him. He works for that ad agency you work with, right? Akio Sato, 33 years old. She just went silent. I called the ad agency and talked to him myself. 
I told him I was your husband. What did he say? He told me everything. You two have been going out for five years now, right? She was the one that asked him out. They've been doing this for a while now. And the thing is, Sato was married too. He even had a daughter in elementary school. I threatened to tell his family about it. He spilled everything. She started apologizing to me, but it was too late for that. Thanks for all the lies, though. I got it all on tape. I got more than enough material for court now. I'm sorry! It'll never happen again! Please forgive me! Please! Get the hell out! Then we got a divorce. The courts ruled in my favor. She had to pay me a huge cash settlement. She went back to live with her parents after that. I heard she works a dead-end job now to pay off her debt. I was just glad that it was all over. A good thing I didn't have any kids. That would have just made things more complicated, so... Anyways, I think I'm gonna take a break from women and enjoy being single for a while. <laughs>